Let's look at site investigation for this chapter 8. I will take you through the scope and purpose of site investigation. We will look at the stages in the site investigation. There will be a need sometimes to carry out in situ testing, like for example the standard penetration test. We will discuss that. Uh, we also look at the uh, borehole log and the soil profile, and I will end with uh, a bit of a uh, format and structure for the site investigation report. There are objectives that we want to achieve when we carry out site investigation. Typically, this objective can be classified into five different areas. Firstly, we may want to look at the general suitability of the construction site and the environment for the proposed works. In addition, we will need to come up with an adequate and economic design for the particular development. So through site investigation, that will allow an economical and adequate design to be prepared and often it will include the need for temporary works, especially if you have deep excavations or um, wide excavations. And we also want to plan the best method of construction. We want to try to foresee and provide against difficulties and delays that may arise during the construction due to ground condition deviations and other local conditions. Sometimes we may need to determine the changes that may arise okay, in the ground and environmental conditions, okay, whether naturally or as a result of the works and the effects of such changes on the works uh, on uh, adjacent projects okay, and the environment in general. Lastly, we also want to investigate whether are there alternatives to advise on the uh, relative suitability of uh, different sites or different uh, parts of the same site for the uh, construction. In addition to the five objectives, Sometimes we also carry out site investigation when we want to report on the safety of the existing works or where alternative to the existing works needs to be planned. Or sometimes uh, if there is a failure, we want to ins investigate the uh, cause of the failure. Uh, and also maybe to uh, look for sources of the construction materials, especially if it's a mega project. So much of the investigation needs to be completed prior to the uh, design stages of the project. If it is a big project, normally we will have some overlap in terms of the site investigation. In a sense, uh, we divide the site investigation into uh, two stages. Okay, the first stage, okay, we try to do it as early as possible so that we have some data for the designers to carry out the planning. Then subsequently, we will go on to the second stage where the uh, information that is obtained can be used to further refine the design that was uh, already uh, completed uh, during the first stage. Right? So for major work, there will be some overlap of the design stage with the site investigation stages. A proper site investigation consists of different stages. Some stage may overlap or occur in slightly different sequence depending on the site and the project. But typically, these are the uh, chronological order of the uh, different stages of the site investigation. You will normally need to do some kind of a uh, test study, and then you need to visit the site to understand the uh, site constraint. Then after that, you can proceed to carry out a detailed site investigation, and that involves collecting of uh, soil samples. You may carry out the in-situ test on the same day that you are doing the uh, site investigation or at different dates. Yeah, The samples that you have collected, you probably bring it to the lab to carry out the lab test. So once you have the data from the lab test and the data from the in-situ testing, you can report your results. Alright, so you can see here uh, that study, okay, essentially a collection of a wide variety of information relating to the site. For example, uh, maps, drawings, details of uh, existing or historic development, local authority information like the uh, this uh, sewer interpretation plan, drainage, uh, this uh, reserve, geological maps, okay, memoirs, records, details of utilities, okay, services, restrictions, right of ways, ownership of uh, adjacent properties, uh, aerial photograph. Then after that, you do the site reconnaissance, right? 
an early examination of the site by appropriate expert okay, is most desirable. For example, the uh, land surveyor, the uh, soil engineer, geologist, or even the uh, uh, hydrologist and uh, geologist. Okay, so information to be collected on the overall site uh, layout, topography, basic geology, uh, details of the access, entry, height restriction, local conditions to be examined, such as the climate the uh, stream flow, groundwater condition, uh, site utilization related to uh, weather and time of the year, and uh, where possible, we try to uh, take photographs or even take video clips. Then after that, we will need to carry out the detailed site the exploration and the investigation. So investigation of uh, detailed geology and uh, subsurface soil condition using surveys, and uh, you can do a bit of uh, excavation, we call it crowd pits, okay? Or you can have a uh, boreholes, okay, sounding, geophysical method, okay, as appropriate, okay, survey of uh, groundwater condition over a significant period of time, okay, maybe even after completions of the works, right. Examination of uh, existing and uh, adjacent structures for signs of uh, cracking or settlement, location of uh, underground structures, cavities, buried pipes and services, right. Provision of samples for further examinations and uh, laboratory testing. There will be a need for the uh, lab testing, right? So test on disturbed and undisturbed samples, okay, submitted from the site team, okay. Test on the soil as specified for classification, quality, permeability, shear strength, compressibility, and all that, yeah. Test on rock cores, okay. Test for strength and durability. Test on uh, constructional materials, for example, California bearing ratio test for roadworks, yeah. Test on groundwater, uh, chemical petrographic uh, analysis yeah and also we may do some tests on the spot we call it in situ testing so tests carry out on the site either prior to or during the construction processes so you can have ground tests such as a uh, vein shear standard penetration test home penetration test plate bearing pressure meter uh, structural load testing for the tiles yeah or proof loading displacement observation and all that so finally, we need to do a report. Okay, so uh, details of the uh, geological study, including structures, stratigraphy, mapping, the results of the boring, yeah, including the uh, logs, reference for samples, and uh, stratigraphy interpretation as uh, requested, yeah, comments and uh, recommendations related to the uh, design and construction of the proposed work, recommendation relating to uh, further investigation or further testing and. Uh, ongoing or post-completion monitoring. When we are drilling the borehole to uh, collect the uh, soil sample, it often disturbs the structural makeup of the soil. For example, the moisture content of the soil or the uh, water pressure in the soil may not be the same because we have disturbed it when we take it out from the ground. So when there is disturbance of the uh, soil sample, we call it a disturbed sample. Right? Uh, you can collect undisturbed sample, but it is very difficult to collect, especially for soft and sensitive uh, clay or even uh, this uh, very sandy uh, material. And uh, the undisturbed sample is uh, very expensive to collect. So as a result, when we do site test, uh, lab testing, the lab test is on sample that has already been disturbed and it may not be representative of uh, the ground condition. So one way to overcome the problem is to carry out in situ site testing. That means you carry out the testing on site instead of in the lab. So that will do away with uh, you know uh, testing on samples that are really disturbed and doesn't represent the actual site condition. However, there are some disadvantages to uh, in situ testing. In situ testing will not be as accurate as the test that is done in the lab because in the lab you are able to control the different conditions. Also, if you are testing on site, you will not be able to control the condition that well because uh, a lot of things will be out of your control. So normally for in situ testing, we try to compensate for this uh, disadvantage or limitation by having a larger number of tests to be carried out. Uh, of course, uh, having a larger number of tests may increase the cost, but uh, that is something that uh, we will uh, take it in order to make sure that uh, we can get a more accurate result. 
these are some of the uh, types of tests that uh, we can actually uh, carry out the in situ, that means on the spot. You don't need to uh, bring the sample to the lab to uh, do a lab test. And uh, the type of test, okay, basically is looking at the uh, density, okay, then you can get the, uh, the estimated shear strength. Uh, looking at the uh, compressibility, okay, that will give you the uh, allowable bearing capacity, yeah. Uh, pore pressure so that you know the drainage pattern or permeability so that uh, you know the in-situ stress so on and so forth. Yeah. Among the different in-situ tests, the standard penetration test is the most common type of in-situ test among these three that is uh, used in Singapore. Uh, in Singapore, we don't really use the cone penetration test so much. Probably in uh, countries like America, they do uh, use the, the cone penetration test uh, more often, right? And you can always uh, do a range test, but again, not as common as the standard penetration test. So what is the standard penetration test? So let's take a look. Right, so the standard penetration test is a widely used uh, test during the course of uh, excavating the uh, borehole, or as you can see in the diagram here, okay? So when you are excavating the borehole, you need to uh, do a uh, drilling and all that. So once you reach a certain depth, okay, especially at the interface of a new uh, layer of soil, you will carry out a standard penetration test before you continue to drill further, deeper into the borehole. Okay? And it's uh, used as a means to estimate the relative density and the shear strength characteristics of the soil. So the test is a uh, main use of a standard procedure. So you have a standard 50 mm diameter deep barrel sampler, okay? So there is a sampler that collects the material while we are doing the test, right? So it's driven into the ground at a bottom of the hole by repeated blows from a drop hammer. So there is a drop hammer that is uh, raised to a certain height. Then after that, it's uh, allowed to fall and it hits the sampler and the sampler is uh, driven into the ground, okay? So every time it hits the sampler, okay, it's counted as a one number of blow. Okay, alright. So sample is uh you know uh falling, okay, a distance of uh, 0 0.76 meters, okay, the weight of the drop hammer is uh, 65 kg, okay, and sample is driven a total of 450 mm into the soil. And the number of blows is recorded for the last 300 mm penetration. So is uh, done in uh, three uh, uh, stages, if you like. The first stage, okay, the sampler, okay, uh, is uh, driven by the hammer, okay, when it's uh, falling, okay, a depth of 150 mm first. So during this stage, you do not count the number of blows. So after it has uh, penetrated into the soil by 150 mm, you then continue to drive it to penetrate another 150 mm, and now you count the number of blows. Okay, there is a second stage, and when it Penetrate by another 150 mm, you continue to drive the, the sampler into the uh, ground and you continue to count the number of blows. So the number of blows for the last 300 mm is counted and called the SPT N value. Alright. So for cohesive sand and uh, this, uh, sorry, cohesive uh, soil and the sand, the cylindrical cutting shoe, okay, or cylindrical cutting shoe can be used, okay, and the samples taken at the same time. So for coarse grain, uh, this uh, soil, uh, solid conical shoe is preferred, okay, giving identical results. And uh, there is a particular test standard, the BS1377, that talks about the, the SPT and value test.